Hey y'all, uh, you want to keep love alive and just really rekindle the fire? I just want to share some things with you. I was kind of reminded of eight different categories of love uh, by the Greeks, which was uh, Eros, uh, Philea, uh, Ludus, uh, Agape, which is one of mine's stickler for that one because it's selfless and it's unconditional. And that's very important in relationships. There's pragma, uh, there's long standing, which is long standing love. Uh, Philadia, which is a uh, self-love which is it's good as long as you ain't in a relationship with somebody and you're being selfish there's nothing wrong with self-love because sometimes you got to find yourself before you find anybody else you know what i'm saying uh and there's stores which is um family love also uh man which is uh obsessive love want nobody being obsessed you know i've seen a couple of movies with some crazy dudes walking around and they're obsessed with this woman following around and doing this and that and the other you don't want to do that, none of that. But uh, the question of what it really means to love someone has been like the inspiration behind a whole lot of songs for decades. It can be a very complicated emotion that all of us experience differently. We talked about the five love languages before. Uh, the five love languages, for example, everyone has their own way of giving and receiving love. Nobody gives and receives love the same way. For an example, Eros love is all about romance, passion, attraction, relationship, which often begin with passion and infatuation and attraction. You know what I mean? Sometimes we say, you know, we so in love with this person, but a lot of times, especially when you're young, a lot of you, you be dealing with infatuation. You know what I mean? You fall in love, you fall out of love, whatever you want to call it. It is mostly a fusion, really, a fusion element, really. And it's designed to draw people together. That's what it's all about. Sexual interest, lust, or passion don't necessarily evolve into lasting, compassionate love. This is why you see, uh, uh, you know, young women with the carriages, left with the carriages, you know what I'm saying? Young women left pushing the carriages. You know, uh, they used to have the famous saying, why buy the cow when you, you can uh, milk it for free? I didn't want to really go there, but that's that that's that's what they said. You know what I mean? I never really was that type. I mean, like you know, I had my own thing, but I never really said that. I think that was really messed up. You know, and I'm a dude, but I, I don't agree with everything that goes on. You know what I mean? But um, I advise you to embrace Arrow's love, particularly in your marriage. Because I'm not a promoter of doing things outside of marriage. Because you know what? It causes a lot of problems. You get a lot of baby mama drama and stuff like that. You know? And, and, and if it's in that segment, enjoy it while it is fresh and new. Because to be honest with you, over time, this type of love will often kind of transition into another type. Or may fade away a little bit. You know what I mean? And always be willing Again, and I'm going to say it again, to rekindle the fire. Because love, it takes work. Marriage, it takes work. Relationship, it takes work. And if you're not willing to put in the work, you're going to lose. I'm Jay Anthony, the voice of love. Talk to you soon.